In this video, I'm going to tell you about the stuff that I brought back from Adepticon 2024. My booty, you might say. I'm back from Adepticon 2024. It was last week in Schaumburg, Illinois, which is west of Chicago. It is the country's largest wargaming convention. There are bigger, like, tabletop gaming conventions, Gen Con, for example, which is like 72,000 people. But if you're looking for a convention that specifically focuses on miniatures and miniature wargaming, then Adepticon's the biggest in the country. I'm not sure if it's the biggest in the world or not. I don't know about that, but it's definitely the biggest in the U.S. And it got bigger since last year. They went from about 7,000 last year, according to their numbers, to preliminary numbers coming out from Adepticon on their Facebook page of over 8,000 this year. So that's a big jump. That's a lot of people. And it did seem pretty busy. I was in the vendor hall quite a bit uh, in the Army Painter booth. And I was there a lot more in the earlier you know, parts of the day, usually 10 till, till 1 p.m. and stuff like that. And there was a lot of people. There was a lot of people in the booth. There was a lot of people walking by. There was a lot of people playing tournaments and stuff like that. We were on the side that was focused right towards the... Um, kind of Asmodee area, so your, you know, X-Wing, Star Wars Legion, uh, the Marvel Crisis Protocol, Shatterpoint, you know, all that kind of stuff was over there, and that's the side of the, the vendor hall that we were on. But it's not just vending, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Golden Demon, um, the Creature Casters, uh, Resin Beast, um, there was a, a paint competition for Privateer Press, for the Marvel games, like all that stuff, everything's there. And um, it's just my favorite convention. I say this every year, and it's still the same. It's my favorite convention. And I brought back a whole bunch of stuff. I feel like this year it was the year of the stickers. I got a lot of stickers. And I had stickers, but I left them in my hotel room most of the times by accident. I think I gave out a couple little stickers. I think I gave out, I gave out some can koozies, those little foam things you put your soda can in. Uh, I gave more of those away than stickers, unfortunately. But I did receive a lovely amount of stickers from a lovely group of people. You can see a whole bunch of them here. Um, I, I think that just because it's so much easier to be able to like produce and you know order online stickers in, in reasonable quantities, I think you're starting to see a lot of people doing that. I think it's very cool. It's a lot of fun to trade them around. You can stick them on your you know, whatever, your carrying case, keep your miniatures in, that kind of stuff. It's always a lot of fun. One thing that I did get um, as a kind of a, a piece of merch that wasn't a sticker was this cool hat. This is Speedy, and this is Matt Yee. This is Matt Yee's dog, Speedy, and he gave me this very nice, um, this very nice uh, embroidered hat, which is uh, uh, Matt Yee. You should be following him on Twitch. He's a lot of fun to watch, but uh, I've been doing that myself. And uh, yeah, we got to talk for a while for a bit, and then he gave me a cool hat. So there's a lot of that that's going on from content creators who are kind of hanging around talking to people and stuff like that. I talked to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people over the course of the like five days or however long I was there. And it's a great convention. But like I mentioned, there's also the vendor hall. And I brought some things back. So you saw at the beginning of this video, there was a little thing up there somewhere that said, oh, you know, includes paid promotion. That's because some of these things we're just kind of like, hey, we want you to have this. They were given to me, and I'll try to remember which ones are which. But anytime that someone gives you something and you make a video, and when you mention it, you're supposed to click that little switch in YouTube and make it happen. So nothing here is sponsored per se. I wasn't paid to say anything, but some of these things I paid for and some things I didn't. Uh, everything on this table I paid for right now at this point. So I'm just grabbing stuff. I've got little uh, grocery bags over here. So I've got stuff over here that I'm going to try to uh, uh, show you folks. So this was over at the uh, Hive Scum booth. This was um, this is a standard issue combat unit, and it is a bunch of mechs, uh, little resin like hand poured mechs, not even spin casted. I don't think I'm pretty sure they're hand poured, which means there's a lot of flash, but that's what you get, you know, with with some hand poured stuff. Um, you can kind of see little pieces of like terrain and crashed mechs and a bunch of other stuff. It's just really cool, kind of neat. Um, things. And I'm looking forward to messing around with these mechs for a game that I'll show you in a little bit once I get to it. It's in a different bag. But yeah, these were, I think, I, th I don't remember who sculpted these. Um, they're from Under the Dice. You'll notice the t-shirt I'm wearing. This, I, you know, I, I bought this from them. It's uh, underthedice.com. These are the guys that are affiliated with the Hive Scum podcast, which I talked about during last year's Tabletop Minions Awards, the TMAs. 
Chow. Uh, and they're a great group of guys. They had the grim dark hallway again this year. So I was, you know, back and forth in there taking a look at all the amazing terrain. Place was packed full of people doing all kinds of kit bashes and stuff like this. And they were selling all kinds of stuff. And I bought these uh, mechs, which I'm going to clean up and try to paint um, for a game called Flames of Orion, which I'll show you in a, in, a, in a little bit. I also stopped by Huge Miniatures and bought some uh, Urban Medium Grit, which is cool. This is basing material that I want to try out. It is not like a uh, it's not like a like a paint or a glue or you know what I mean. It's like it's literally. Can I open it? I can. Is it sealed? No. It's like literally just kind of. It's almost like coffee grounds, but smaller a little bit. And I don't know what it's made out of, but it's stuff that I'm gonna be able to glue down to bases and then prime over and then paint over and all that kind of stuff. So it was kind of interesting. They had a lot of different things, but this is the one that spoke to me. So that's the one that I picked up. Um, then I got these mini Masterworks uh, water activated color pencils for rust, dirt, and damage. I picked these up from Elric Hobbies out in the hallway. Uh, wet or dry application provides smooth coverage and excellent blending for sci-fi, fantasy, etc. 12 highly pigmented watercolor pencils designed for rust blending, light rust, red rust, etc. Um, but they're nice little pencils that I want to try to mess with. I, I messed with them there a little bit in the booth, and then I was like, all right. So here's Streaking Grime. I'll look at that. Is it going to focus? There we go. So this is the Streaking Grime color, and you can just kind of put it on there, and then you could use a brush to with some water to sort of spread it out and kind of blend it and things like that. So... I'll mess with that kind of stuff. I always like different weathering products to see what I can make happen. And so uh, I picked this up from the booth. Then there was also, and I don't even know where I got this. This is 3D printed. It was up towards, to, towards the front. So if someone who was at that booth remembers, uh, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I do not remember the name. Sometimes you'd walk by a booth and it wouldn't be super clear. They wouldn't have like big fancy graphics. But this kind of just reached out to me, and I know I'm going to spray it with a lot of primer, really cover up some of the... It's not very bad. It's actually pretty good as far as 3D printing. This is FDM, meaning that it's the kind with the filament. Um, it's just going to be a cool terrain piece that's going to... I'm going to stick to a different piece of stuff and maybe make it sort of cockeyed so it's not just straight perfectly, but maybe it looks like it's old and it's sort of tilted over a bit and some other stuff and the rock is all busted up or whatever. It just looked really cool, and I saw it... Possibly the bright green color did help, but I saw it and I was like, ooh, I want that thing. So I picked it up. There was also a booth called Worm Forge. And Worm Forge uh, makes a bunch of different miniatures. They sell stuff from themselves and also from Westphalia. Now, I've purchased some stuff from Westphalia in the past. They are a company that uh, did a Kickstarter for a bunch of Morkborg miniatures that I thought was pretty cool. Um, and so I, that's kind of what drew me in. And I saw it and went, oh, okay, cool. That's 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 something. And then um, these are, again, resin miniatures. There's a lot of bubble wrap. But they're just kind of weird and crazy. I don't know if you can't really tell. This is just a whole collection of parts. But they're really w weird and crazy kind of like weird creatures. You can check out that guy's like flail that he's got there or Morningstar or whatever you call it. Flail, I think. So yeah, they're just a collection of these weird, crazy ones. And they come with clear plastic bases, but I'm not going to use those. I'm going to... I like to use the, the regular bases. Um, and then over here, this one, you know, I could have just slid this off instead of cutting it. That would have been smart. Uh, oh, but there's still tape. So this one is just these cool cultists that were made by Wormforge, which I thought were really neat. I don't know who sculpted them, um, but again, they're resin. They come wrapped in, um, like that's a one piece. Like, that guy's just really cool. He's just a cool-looking cultist that he's... I'm going to do something with it. I don't know what. Um, but there was a whole group of them. There's, like, I don't know, six, seven of them in this in this thing. So I picked that up as well, and I'll do some cool stuff with it at some point in the future. When I was in Las Vegas for the Las Vegas Open earlier part of the year, there was a booth there for a company called uh, Enemy Spotted Studios, I believe, and they have a game called Blackout. Now, I might have seen it at Nova back in late August or early September of 2023, but I don't, I think they were there, but I don't remember seeing the booth particularly. I think I might have glimpsed it from a distance. It was around a corner, but it was more prominent at LVO. I stopped by and I looked at a bunch of the stuff and it's like a, it's like a tactical game, but instead of it being like, okay, well, the Marines are fighting against insurgents or whatever, all that kind of stuff, it's like a hundred and some years in the future on a different planet. And it's like some megacorp versus some like other, it's, it's, it's not historical or modern. It's 
sci-fi, but it still has a very tactical vibe. But yet the book is incredibly like tiny and concise, and it's even like spiral bound. I kind of like it. Anyway, I ordered their two-player starter from the website, got it, and I'm going to start building it soon. And I came across their booth at Adepticon, and I purchased two more models from them. These are called dusters. So these dusters are, if you've ever played Titanfall, they're kind of like that. In Titanfall, the video game, um, you call down this big, huge mech that you climb up into, and then you get to be in a mech for a while. Uh, that's just a, a function of the game. Otherwise, it's a first-person shooter. You're running around shooting and stuff like that. This is like that, except I don't think that you jump into the mechs. I think you just get to call them down at certain points in the scenario. And then once a person, one of the you know people playing, triggers that scenario, then the other person gets to do theirs as well. And then they come around. And so they're, they're 3D printed, but they're good-sized mechs. I'll try to throw some pictures up here on the, uh, on the, on the screen. And um, so I picked these two up to add to my force. So when I'm time to build, then I've got a little bit more to mess with. So that's pretty cool. I also came across Fireforge Games. They've got this series called Forgotten World. And these are living dead warriors. They're basically zombie soldiers. They're real nice uh, models, actually. Um, the, the back here, I, it's one of those situations where sometimes the paint job doesn't do it as much justice as I would think it would. Um, but I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, those are probably passable. But then I got the plastics and well, that's a base. I got the plastics. I opened them up and started looking at them. And I was honestly quite impressed with the detail and the modularity. They remind me a lot of like Frostgrave miniatures or Stargrave miniatures, that kind of stuff. Hard plastic, sprues, um, War Games Atlantic, same type of thing. So I'd never heard of Forgotten World or uh, Fire Forge games. But I saw these at a booth, and I was like, well, those are real nice. And then I picked them up. Again, it's the type of thing that happens when you go to Adepticon. You find stuff that you didn't know that you wanted, and then you pick it up. Um, again, back at uh, Las Vegas Open back in January, I also bought some cool fantasy terrain stuff uh, from a company there called Broken Egg Games. I'm 98% sure that's right. This stuff is 3D printed. Some of the stuff I bought there was poured resin, and some was 3D printed. This is 3D printed completely. So it's just a cool fantasy house that comes in three parts. Um, now, it's not sculpted on the inside, so I'm going to glue it together. I, I'm not going to sit there and sculpt in the inside. I just want it to be like a cool building. But it comes in three pieces, probably make it easier to print and ship. But once you got it all, like, it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of little details. I mean, some of these things have already busted off, I'm assuming. That's kind of a bummer. I think that was me. Um, they didn't have any boxes. So, uh, yeah. But it's a real nice-looking thing. Um, I'm looking forward very much to gluing it together and then priming the heck out of it and doing some painting. I might have to do a little bit of putty filling up here where the gap is, but it's not so bad. Honestly, once you glue that down and you prime it, you may not even see the gap there where that goes together. It's very well done, and I, I was pretty impressed with it, which is why I picked it up. All right, last few things I'm going to go through here. I think all this stuff was given to me, so we'll just lump this all at the end. Number one, uh, there was an event after the Games Workshop preview that they did on Wednesday night. It went for a long time, that preview. It was real, real, real long. I've got opinions about it. But nonetheless, uh, after that, there was a thing for content creators like myself that GW put on. We went up to some lounge on some floor or whatever. And um, anyway, they gave us these little baggies that had two of the commemorative models in it. We've got this Tau Empire. Uh, the Hunter Strikes is what this is called. And it's got a Kroot in there. And he's pretty cool. Um running. He's got his gun. He's going to smack somebody with it, which is not normally how guns work, but whatever, you know, he's a crew. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's a cool model, although I can see myself kit bashing it, tweaking the head or something like that. But then there was this model, which I haven't seen before. This is called the Steel Rook. And that's a that's just a really super cool model for uh, Age of Sigmar. I've never come across anything like this before from them. It's real nice. There's a crow, and that makes sense. Um, it's just really cool armor. This I want to paint up and not tweak at all, I don't think. It's really neat. Um, I want to open up and figure out like what force he's supposed to be with, what the rules might be, all that kind of stuff. Of course, um, you've probably heard that 4th edition Age of Sigmar is coming probably this summer, if I had to guess. But it, they did announce it at Adepticon, so I'm sure rules will change and things will tweak and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, things I was given... Uh, Bill from Berserker Works, I'll try to put some information down in the uh, thing below, he gave me a copy of his game, which is called Mech 28. Now, this is a robot fighting type game, you know, like, a, let's say, Battletech or something like that, maybe, except 
that it's 28 millimeter scale, hence the 28 in the, in, so your mechs, instead of being like this big, it says right here in the beginning, um, a mech is any model around four inches or taller from base to top in the 28 millimeter scale with some sort of legs, no tracks, Tracks are for tanks. Mechs can be machines, robots, biomechanoid, vat-grown horrors, giants, fleshies, futuristic, or from an alternate reality, or whatever you want. Have fun and build cool models. The rules below are designed to let you play quick and destructive games with kit bashes or models you already own against other cool people with cool models. The thing that's interested about this is I've already taken a look at this before he gave this to me. This is a nice little printed version, but he has, and I'll put it in the link, he has like a download where you can get it for free and it's just a text file. It's not even like a PDF. It's literally just a text file. But this is, which is why you can see there's like, this is, you know, ASCII art and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very cool. And if you're interested in trying out like cool indie games, I would take a look at this as well. Speaking of another uh, mech game, indie game that was given to me by the creator. This is called Flames of Orion, and this is an Under the Dice field manual. Again, Under the Dice here. Um, these are the folks that ran the Grimdark Hallway, uh, Pod Scum, or not Pod Scum, Hive Scum podcast. I'm like Pod Scum. Yeah, anyway, you get me what I'm saying. Um, and this is also uh, an alpha test version right here, but this is another new mech game that is being designed uh, and worked on by um, the folks from Under the Dice, predominantly Steve. Uh, and I'll put a link down below as well where you can find more information about this. Um, they've been running this at some small conventions, like the, well, it's not that small, but, it, uh, you know, uh, the, North e uh, the New England Mordheim Open, Nemo, and Under the Dice Fest, which is a thing that happened back in January out on the East Coast. Uh, I was unable to go, sadly, because it was like right after um, LVO, but I, I miss going and I really want to go next year, whether it's the week after LVO or not. Um, but yeah, so this is a very cool concept. This is using like your Battletech size, uh, you know, that scale miniature. Um, I picked up these things that I showed you before, this standard issue combat unit. I picked up these models so that um, I can use them with this game. Um a guy named Adam, not me, but a different guy named Adam, is going to be running this and a couple other things at the Tabletop Minions Expo. If you go to tabletopminions.org slash TMX, you can find out more about that. It's coming up 1st and 2nd of June. Uh, lastly, uh, this book, Cauldron, which I have come across before. I came across the PDF of this on Wargame Vault, and it is a swamp skirmish game from Hill Giant Games. Cauldron is a swamp skirmish game by Hill Giant, and you will love it. It says so right there on the thing. And if you're familiar at all with like Morkborg and that kind of style of layout, like this will make total sense to you because everything is, you know, super cool and crazy looking. Uh, but this is basically a skirmish game that happens in a swamp and it's between uh, goblins and orcs and uh, trolls and beasts and other things that fight in swamps. And uh, it's it's just amazing. If you get the chance, pick up the PDF, or uh, I think I'll try to put a link in there too that'll show you to where you can get the print version, I think. Um, but yeah, they came up and handed this to me at one point, and um, I told them that I'd already seen it, you know, I'd already been taking a look at it, and it was very cool. So it was very nice of them to give me one of these as well. I, you know, all the big companies for the most part, obviously, were at Adepticon. You're your games workshops, your, um, you know, your Asmodee with all the, you know, uh, Atomic Mass games, like all the big names are there generally at um, Adepticon. But the thing that I'm always the most interested in is the small stuff that you don't find in stores and that maybe you don't know about and, and that kind of stuff. These are the things that I really like to find at small conventions like this. And Adepticon's not that small, um, obviously, in comparison to something like, again, Gen Con, which is like 72,000 people, it's quite small, but this is, I think, a lot more accessible and also completely like aimed towards people who are into miniatures. Whereas when you look at something like Gen Con, you're looking at, you know, people who are into board games, people who are into RPGs, all that kind of stuff. If you get the chance, and I say this every year, try to get yourself to Adepticon because that's a great place where you'll be able to find not only products like these things, but also the people who make them, which is really cool. And you'll be able to discover new things. So if you get the chance, uh, take a look at the links in below that I'll try to drop down there and, um, you know, help support some of these folks and kind of uh, ex expand your horizons within your tabletop wargaming. I think that's the best bet. 
If you liked this video, uh, this Adepticon booty video, you know, you know what to do. Please hit the like thing down there and maybe there'll be a little explosion or confetti or whatever. I Again, it, one of these days I'm going to figure out what that is. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this every single Friday, then, you know, subscribe. I appreciate that as well. And thanks for watching.